a recent Hacker News post about version 2 of Tailwind CSS has received more than 1,000 points. I'm not a UI guy, but I'm interested in things that receive so much attention, so I went ahead and checked. What is this library about? What's all the noise about? So here is my view on this. When you do some UI in the web, then you are writing HTML pages. However, there is a notion of separation of concerns, which says, just like in the backend, that the HTML should deal with the content, with the semantics, and the CSS should deal with the styling, and you should not mix one with another. Such that I could take one HTML if built well and replace the CSS to a different CSS and receive a whole different styling of the HTML page. As this is the separation of concerns of the styling and the HTML. For us, backend guys, it all looks like UI, but for them, the frontend guys, it's the content of the HTML and the CSS is the styling. They also have separation of concerns. And this we call semantic CSS. So the question is this, what are you going to have in the CSS that you include in the HTML? And this is the basic questions that both Bootstrap and the Tailwind CSS and other CSS libraries deal with. Which elements are we going to expose? What is the API, as the backend guy says? What is the API of the CSS library or framework? Is the API going to be low level? and expose all the CSS basics, or is it going to be higher level? So Bootstrap says, I'm going to be a high level. I'm going to expose a card. You want to show a card on the screen, or you want to show an alert on the screen? No problem. In your uh, uh, HTML element, refer to class, which refers to the CSS value. Class equals card, or class equals um, alert. And in this way, we have a whole set of components um, with predefined configurations. This is a higher level of abstraction. Not only is it a higher level of abstraction, you're dealing with actual uh, entities, card, alert, next button, previous button. And all these already have a preset of CSS configurations. So th this is all fine and good, and Bootstrap is, of course, uh, heavily used uh, all around uh, the world. The only problems that I can see with this and others can see is that you need to remember card. Okay, you need to remember alert. You need to remember button next. You need to remember the specific entities and what if you need a different button next? Oh, and what if you need a different thing? Because you have this at a very high level, then there are two results. First, it's a little bit uh, more difficult to remember all the entities that exist. You have to rely like on existing entities. Second, if you need to change the styling of an element, you need to go to the CSS file and over there change all the styling. It's a little bit messy. It's another step that you need to go through, but there is a very clear separation. I didn't mention, but there is also the notion of bare CSS. So you don't use any framework or library. You just write the CSS uh, yourself, which is also fine and good. And there are probably also more approaches to this problem. But the basic one is the, one of the common one is the bootstrap, where you have already the styling defined for you, the semantic styling, and you just use it and change it appropriately. The problems come when you need to change stuff, when you need to remember which elements do I have, what happens if you don't have the element that you need, you need uh, some menu that pops up from the left and you're searching for it, you found something, but it's not really what you want, so you need to change the CSS, etc, etc. Okay, so th this is the problem that the UI guys are facing with Bootstrap, but for most basic things, Bootstrap is just good enough, okay? So the approach that Tailwind is uh, is uh, giving us is saying, I will go a little bit lower level. So, so now we move on to Tailwind CSS, the one that received the 1000 points, and why did it receive so much attention, and why I also think it's pretty good. But the reason is this, because Tailwind CSS said, I would go a little lower level, I will not go the semantic path that Bootstrap went into card and button next. 
you build the card. So there is a trade off. You build the card yourself. However, I'm going to make it easy to build such things because all the things that you didn't remember in Bootstrap that existed like card or button X, now you would remember them. Why? Because it's all very consistent. It's PG gray 100, which is the background is gray and 100. Okay, so you need one, uh, one just use 101. You want something rounded, you just use rounded. You want something uh, font semi-bold, you write font semi-bold. So all this, and now you, this is the way you construct. So if you need a card, don't mention class equals card. You just write in the HTML class equals BG gray 100 rounded font semi-bold multiple lower level. It's a lower level API, but it's also very simple to remember them because you are going to use them over and over and over again. So we have some decoupling for the HTML from the uh, CSS. It's not fully semantic. You do define the lower level, but you don't define them the CSS in the higher level, the two bootstrap took like card, button, badge, uh, image rounded. But uh, what you're doing with the, with the Tailwind CSS is that you control the text sizes. You have all the properties to control the text sizes, the colors, the weights, the borders, the colors, the width, the position. You have Flexbox, bedding margins, and vocabulary. And, and to tell you the truth, it's always like this. So it, it's always that these things would repeat themselves. You just say, instead of auto a bio class, you say the text size is 10, the color is this, the, the, the border is on, and then you will see this repeating over and over again. You need to align right, so you do use the CSS class, align right. Uh, you don't use the action list, okay? You use a button. You want a button that is smaller, so you use the smaller, uh, use the other property. Okay, you want a button that is the next, so in Bootstrap, you would say class equals next. So now in Tailwind CSS, you would say align right to align the button to the right because it's next. Bootstrap would already uh, think of the button as next and align it to the right. You want the button to be primary? Okay, so you use BG background blue uh, 500. You use font bold. So all this uh, is reusable. While in Bootstrap, you used alert progress bar. In Tailwind, you use border border one, border L, it's all going to repeat. So the good things about Bootstrap is all websites are going to be, uh, to have a look and feel, which is very similar. You already have pre-made like components. In Tailwind, you use the lower level, but the advantage in Tailwind is that you're going to repeat and reuse them. And no one forbids you from aggregating. If you see something that is going, uh, if you see 10 properties in a class that are repeating over and over and over again, in the whole website, just aggregate them into a single CSS. No one blocks you from doing this. So there's not going to be that much of a repeat. It's going to be pretty simple. So the things is this. When you need to choose between Bootstrap and Tailwind, if you already know Bootstrap or want to use it, it's great. If you want to use Tailwind, it's also great. With Tailwind, it's going to be like a little bit more usable for things that are a little bit more different than the standard look and feel of uh, Bootstrap. You will have more control. If you want to replicate a website that you see on screen, then I would say, or an image, then I would be replicating something, then Bootstrap is going to be great. Which are comparisons in between some uh, CSS uh, uh, like, uh,